So to create an integration, we would have to create a route. So if we go to the route overview, we click on creating a route, we pretty soon see that we, for the route, we need an incoming configuration and an outgoing configuration. So we need where it comes from, and we also need where it goes to. So that me, this means that we would have to create an incoming configuration and also an outgoing configuration. So first of all, let's create the incoming configuration. And in this case, I will call it getting started session and we will call it get customers. So in this case, mostly what we write for the naming is we write the platform where it's come from. However, for in this case, I will use demo data for this getting started session to just simply show a lot of functionalities within Illumio rather than having to go into these systems. But this could be, for example, your ERP system, your e-commerce system or anything like that. Then below that, we have the subscriber. The subscriber is how do we talk to system A? So this could be, for example, we would like to access a database directly. We would like to talk to a file system. For example, if there's an FTP server with a CSV or XML file on there, we support SOAP calls. We also support GraphQL. But in most cases, we see that we're talking to an HTTP subscriber. So in the case that there is no connector package, we would have to use the HTTP subscriber in which we can define the URL of the place we would talk to. However, in this case, we could provide the full URL here of the API endpoint, which we would like to talk to, but it is more easy to put this more generic and therefore have like certain API calls based on a client and the client then has the connectivity to where the system is at and such kind of information. The reason that we do this is let's say the uh, system changes from like a specific URL location, you would not have to go through like multiple settings to change like a lot of this information, especially if you go, for example, from a um, staging environment towards a production environment that you don't have to change a lot of functionalities that way, but you actually can change that in one place. So with this, we're only talking to slash users in this case, we get the, we use the get method. We can apply plugins and authentication on this level, but same as what I said for the location of the URL, let's apply this on the place for the client as well. Then we can also say like, okay, are there certain parameters towards the request? We can place those in there. We also have a request encoder. So that's the kind of data that we can work with. That's also good to mention within Alumio, we're always looking at JSON data. However, let's say XML comes in and you would like to uh, work with that. It is very possible. However, within Alumio, it's translated to JSON from XML to JSON. Let's say on the other side, you need XML again. We will translate that from JSON towards XML. Same works for YOMO, CXML, or any kind of these data structures. The reason that we choose to work with uh, JSON is because JSON is a very readable and simple to understand structure that is just a key value notation, which we'll show a little bit more later if you're not familiar with that yet. From here, I can also um, connect one of those clients. However, the client I would like to connect to is not within the system yet. So therefore I would have to create a client which is under the clients over here. So once at the screen of the um, HTTP clients, I will create a new client saying a getting started client. And within here, I would like to add three plugins. So the three plugins are first of all, at uh, the base URI to request. So that is the base URI of the system that we're talking to. And the next one would be, we would like to have a certain logging and the logging for the long, we have three days. We have full, that's everything long, that's 10,000 and simple, that's a hundred. So in this case, long will mostly suffice. Then we could also say we like to add content type header to request, which is a simple uh, plugin that says like, okay, I recognize that my data is a JSON and therefore I will put JSON in the content type header, same for XML, et cetera. This is also where we can apply the authentication. So in this case, I'm talking to an open API endpoint and I don't need any authentication, but let's say there would be any authentication. We could say, for example, let's say there's a bearing token. I just simply fill in the bearing token over here. And then Alumio knows, okay, this is how you write a bearing token within the header request. We could also do that for OAuth 2 in which we can provide all of the information about client ID, client secret, token, uh, authorization, a URL, and certain kind of things. We can click on the receive an access token. Once we click on that, it will actually go towards the base, try uh, to the page, try to get that access token, and then store it back here in the key. Then that also means that everything with the refresh token and everything is already taken care of by Alumio. So you don't have to look at that and every call that is made is paid on that um, all out authentication that way. Let's say that there is a system on premise with a certain firewall or any kind of like, let's say more exotic authentication that way. We have a whole bunch of options over here that will suffice for all of those needs 
to connect to any system, whether there's like a whitelisting, VPN tunneling, or anything like that. So from that, we have everything configured. However, there's one thing. I'm putting the URL over here right now. We could actually make this slightly easier and better to place the URLs within the environment variables. So if we go to the environment variables, in this case, I already placed the URL in here, which is the demo based URL or URI. So what this means is that we have a variable which is representing the URL. The good uh, or the reason to do this or something that's good about doing this is that let's say you have a environment of staging and production, then this will also give like the list of saying like, okay, these are all of the URLs you would have to change. However, this also gives a list, for example, let's say I place a URI in here and that is GAS, let's say test. And I would try to save this in here. I would go to my environment variable list. It will actually give me an error message of saying like, hey, you are missing certain um, environment variables. So, and you can actually check from here, like, okay, where is that variable then located? So with that, it, this, it's very simple to see like, okay, what kind of environment variables are used and which one do I still have to fill in? Let's say I switch from system to system or something. Then let's say we use this one and then it will not give the error message anymore. Another thing we can also use environment variables for are like certain access tokens, a password, keys, or anything like that. Because if I check this in a uh, variable, I will see that I can see the value. However, if I see for, for example, a certain password or a secret, I cannot see the value because it's encrypted. I cannot see it over here as well. And also it would get stripped from the login which means let's say you do a certain request based on a certain API key, the API key would therefore be in the logging that will be restricted from the logging as well and showed up as redacted. So from there, we have this uh, client all set up right now. We can save that and that is all configured right now. So once we go back to the uh, HTTP clients, we can see that we have the GSS uh, client in here for the getting started client. From here, we can also put an input transformer. An input transformer could, for example, be used to use one of the transformers, which I will talk a little bit more about later, to, for example, set a date. And then based on that date, we can do our request and do the parameters of the request that way. Or let's say you have certain pagination or anything uh, like that. You can also follow those links and saying like, okay, we have a certain bookmark where we left off the last time. Then we implement that and we include that within the link for the next time. That's something we can use the input transformer for, which is handled before the data came in. Then we can also have the option here to follow the pagination page is where we can see like, okay, if there's a certain next link, we can follow that for pagination. Or if there's an increased query parameter, we can follow that as well for uh, following the pagination that way. Then we also have the entity schema over here, which we will talk a little bit more about later. And we have the entity transformer over here so we can apply a transformer that is happening after the data came in. So in this case, we will save that and we have everything configured for the incoming configuration. Now we would have to go to a route and we would have to configure a route as well. So in this case, I will call it for getting started session and we will say we uh, push the customers towards a system. So in this case, we have all of the things that we could talk to as a subscriber, also as the counterpart for being the publisher. So again, databases, GraphQL, SOAP, HP client, file system, everything. So also for connect the package, if we can retrieve the information from there, we also have it that we can push the information over there. However, for this demo, I will be showing the HP publisher. And within the HP publisher, I will be talking to the HP org anything which is a very simple open API endpoint that allows me to post data over there. And it just says like, okay, you post a JSON in a certain format, I show you the format, and therefore I give it 200, okay, because it's valid JSON. So once we save that, we can send information over there and it's very simple to test your income configuration towards like what is it on the outgoing side. So now we have the income configuration uh, figured out, we have the outgoing configuration figured out, we can actually configure our route. So to create our route, we would have to write uh, what we are doing with the system. So in this case, we would like to write object from system A to system, uh, system B. So in this case, as you would see, um, I would be working with uh, customers. And in this case, we are looking from, GI, uh, from the getting started to the getting started. So these are not actually systems. So therefore it would be uh, GSS to GSS. However, that doesn't make too much sense. So let's call it for customers going from point A to point B as for this demo. 
Then other things I can also configure within the route is more entity transformers. And this is probably a good part to also say like, okay, where can we manipulate the data and why is that? Which is also better explained within the entity transformer video itself. However, for the entity transformers, we have four points where we can uh, uh, apply those, which is before the data comes in at the incoming configuration, after the data came in on the incoming configuration, on the route, and also on the outgoing configuration. There will be a better video explaining like why would you like to have this many places of your configurations of your transformation, but a slight uh, version or a simple version of that would be, let's say we take the example of one system providing for three other systems. Therefore, you would have to do certain mapping of changing within those three different systems. So let's say we have one system providing for three other systems. That also means you have three outgoing configurations and therefore you can apply those three transformations on these outgoing configurations. However, let's say you would have to do some changes for all of the, all of the three, which are uh, individually the same. Then you could apply these changes on the incoming configuration. So you don't have to repeatedly do those steps on the outgoing configuration. And that's why we have multiple places to put those entity transformers. Other things I can show is that we can sh uh, add multiple transformers if we would like to. We can also say we would like to actively retry if a task fails. So for example, we can say like we'd like to retry the system five times every like five minutes to see if there's something failing in the system. Or if something fails in the system, we try to send that one through again. Then we can also enable real-time processing and enabling real-time processing is what I mentioned before in the first video saying like, okay, data comes in. I don't want the data to come in as a new task, but I want data to come in as a processing task. And therefore it will be sent with a more real-time process. Once we create this, we will save this. We can also see that we can apply certain alerting to this. So the alerting would be, let's say we would like to say, send a certain email in case that a task, for example, fails, and then we can fill in the email addresses, which it would have to send to. In this case, that is not necessary. So this is the end of the second video explaining of how to set up an integration, how to set up the income configuration, the outcome configuration, and the route itself. Within the next video, we will show, okay, what happens if we, within the next video, we will show you if we pull information from one system and send it to the other system, how that would actually work like. Thank you.